Pokemon Go has been out for a while, so I'm afraid I might be too late to give any tricks or tips or reveal any groundbreaking revelations. But I have yet to see an actual review of the game from anyone. Oh, I'm sure there are a couple, but they might just be drowned out by the Imagi Pokemon! Hey, what's that noise? Hey, I'm Ash Ketchum! I'm gonna be the best Pokemon trainer the world has ever seen! I don't care. And honestly, no one was more reinvigorated on Pokemon than I was at the sight of augmented reality pocket monsters. The first time I caught my Squirtle off the bookshelf was a real high. There. Okay. Um. Uh, how do I battle you? The augmented reality feature is the key to making this such a runaway hit. After all, who didn't want to catch Pokemon in the real world? I would walk around the family cabin with my Game Boy in hand, imagining my journey through the land of Kanto. Although it took me a second to actually turn on my phone's GPS. You know, Bulbasaur was my very first one. I'm going to go with Bulbasaur. How do I... I'm tapping. I'm, I'm, I'm tapping. You think Pokemon Professor Rick here would tell you that right off the bat? Found every corner of the earth. Well, you know, I'm just it's just dawning on me how totally not Pokemon this guy is. I mean, it seems less like like the Pokemon anime aesthetic I grew up with and more like uh, you know, like this guy would be on the cover of uh Clip Studio, you know? He really wasn't helpful. In fact, most of the game's tutorial is not very helpful at all. It gives you the basics of the basics, but kind of leaves out all the nuances of the game. Like the Poka Radar. That's not the official name, but whatever. Basically, the fewer footsteps next to a Pokemon, the closer it is to you. You can even isolate that Pokemon specifically to increase the chances of running into it. I think. Like I said, the game tutorial is bare bones. Luckily, the online community has really stepped up. We have videos, and outlines, and charts, and cheat sheets, and guides, and corrections to those guides. The already infamous Pikachu cheat has been uncovered. If you walk away from the three starter Pokemon enough, a Pikachu will appear. And I've confirmed this on my grandmother's phone. Oh yeah, you see, I was out in the suburbs when the game was actually released, helping my grandmother with different things, including repairing various leaks in her irrigation. Worked out fine for me. I got to sit out front all day and catch any stray Pokemon that happened to wander by. Although eventually my grandmother did get curious as to why I would pop up for my work and run down the street every now and then. So what's the, what's the whole... if you get a mall? Well, you don't, it's not about getting them all, it's about, uh, it's about training the ones that you do have. Training them? Yeah, training them. You, you play little games with them. <laughs> oh. Okay. Unfortunately, I was blocks away from any actual Pokestop, and the damn server was always down when I went into the store. But turns out my isolation was a curse and a blessing. Grandma's house is right against some beautiful mountains. Hey, little bunny. And because of that, the Pokemon were plentiful. They just show up in her house sometimes. I caught a freaking pincer in her front room. Unlike my house, which doesn't have anything near it. Turns out, Pokemon are regional, which means that the urban central environment doesn't really have anything special, unlike Grandma's Mountains, where there's all kinds of rare Pokemon. Although, like I said, I never actually went to a Pokestop. Yeah, you visit landmarks called Pokestops, so you can pick up free Pokeballs and other useful items. And if you can't do that, you can always buy some in-game currency. You know, if you're in a pinch and a rare Pokemon just happens to be nearby. Especially because each Pokeball you throw and miss is a ball you've just wasted. And the odds are that you're going to go through a couple before actually getting the feel of the mechanic. Which is kind of shaky at best. Again, no tip to turn off augmented reality to stabilize the camera. Which is handy if you're really trying to get that rare Pokemon before it runs away. But on the other hand, you don't get that epic feeling of staring down at Geodude in someone's rock garden. Although, like Grandma, people did start to get suspicious of the guy stopping in front of every other house to take pictures. The internet is full of stories like this already, especially this very topical article about the real fear of playing Pokemon uh, while being black. 
The worst I ever got was a red car driven by an older man. Passed me about five times while I was walking around. On the third pass, I realized he was slowing down each time to specifically look at me. It wasn't until I was greeted by my grandmother at the door that he finally realized where he was going. Of course, the one time I visited a Pokestop near my house to test the range, I did see a delightful exchange between an unstable vagrant and a confrontational man double-fisting two brown bags. So, that was fun. Although the next night was much better, when I went out at 11 to catch a Charmander. With only 5% left on my battery, I managed to catch the little matchhead, just as a pimp was heading down the street. Well, he may not have been a pimp, but he looked like he would cinch an audition by the way he was walking. I've actually had many a close call that I was unfortunately unable to record, or lost the recording due to my phone overheating and shutting down, corrupting the file. Turns out running a graphic-heavy GPS app while screen recording in the 100-plus Arizona frying pan I call home can be a little taxing on the hardware. I've taken to walking around with an ice pack under my phone to keep it cool. It actually works, but the ice pack actually melts before my battery dies, so the max time is a little over an hour, and that's at 7 in the morning. Before I move on, I must tell you of one last epic yarn. There I was, enjoying some of Grandma's iced tea after a long morning of digging up her yard, when I just so happened to spot a Tauros on the radar. With only 5% left on an already heated battery, I grabbed an ice pack and bolted out the door and down the street. The 112 degree noon sun was beating down on me and the bovine beauty I found in the neighbor's driveway. After a few failed attempts and a handful of raspberries, I managed to catch him. Then suddenly, a magmar came out of nowhere. With only 2% left on my battery, it seemed like a lost cause, so I turned around and started to head home. But as I did, the magmar started to move closer and closer. And then, right in front of Grandma's garage, birthed from her own glorious Wi-Fi connection, was the magmar. Instinct took over. I flung the ball in desperate attempt to beat all the ticking clocks that were against me. And with my one and to this date only excellent throw, I caught it. But despite successfully catching my most powerful and rarest Pokemon to date, it didn't really matter. Because by the time I actually got to my first gym, I got decimated. Because all the gyms were filled with Pokemon with twice my power level. And so, after only three days, certain unsavory truths were beginning to set in. So let's actually talk about the game mechanics, or as of this date, my understanding of them. First, you don't level up your Pokémon in the traditional sense. You, the player, level up way more than they do. You get experience from everything. Visiting a stop, a gym, evolving a Pokémon, catching a Pokémon. Which actually relates to the excellent throw that was oh so pivotal in catching my Magmar earlier. You see that ring around the Pokémon? Lob the ball in the white and it's a hit. If you get it in the shrinking ring, it gives you a bonus, depending on the size of it at the time. Ranking from nice to great to excellent, the harder the difficulty, the more experience you'll get. There's also something called a curveball. I've gotten a few times, but not while performing the spin trick I've heard about. Spinning the ball will add an arc to it. I spent a whole outing doing this, and despite by all definitions curving the ball, I never once got the curveball bonus with it. But don't worry, you'll have plenty of practice catching every Pokemon you see. But wait, in Pokemon you only need one. Well, it became very apparent that this isn't Pokemon. And it gives a whole new meaning to catch them all. As in, you have to catch everything you see all the time. Because the only way you get stronger Pokemon is if you get stronger. Or you can capture duplicates of the same Pokemon, which give you candy. Rare candy? No, candy named after that certain type of Pokemon for that certain type of Pokemon. You see, your Pokemon don't fight wild Pokemon like in the original. And when they do fight, they don't get experience from it. Which not only goes against Pokemon, but every known RPG convention ever. Each Pokemon you catch has three candies on them. Kind of like the berries. Those candies are then added to a collective pool of that kind of Pokemon. If you want, and you will want to, you can transfer the extra Pokemon to the Professor. 
In exchange for each Pokemon, you get one candy of that type. So every wild Pokemon is actually worth four candies. So that's about 11 Growlithes to get an Arcanine. Evolution is the most effective way to power up your Pokemon. But let's say you won't or can't evolve them. Well, then you can always power them up with Stardust. What the hell is Stardust? I don't know. But you get it every time you catch a Pokemon, though. And it costs a certain, often increasing, amount of Stardust, plus one candy to increase your Pokemon's power. And what happens if you power up a rare Pokemon and all of its candy is gone? Well, you have to catch another one. And what happens if that one is stronger than the one you have? Because like I said, a Pokemon's strength is a random integer based on the player's increasing experience. In other words, a Geodude you catch at level 10 will be vastly more powerful than one you catch at level 3. It's the trickle-down economics of Pokemon. The stronger you get, the stronger your Pokemon get. Well, not all of your Pokemon. You'll sell most of them and they'll end up inside out and upside down in a market window. That's right, if they're weaker, you just ground them up. The ones you may have wasted Stardust and Candy on. And again, that's a big if, because if it's a rare Pokemon, it might be a while before you find another one to power it up. It doesn't really matter what your starter Pokemon is, because you won't find enough of its kind to make it useful. Gyms are already dominated by super strong and rare Pokemon that people are just lucky to catch, or OP commons. But even getting a basic Pokemon to that level is tedious work. I conducted an experiment. I evolved a Pidgey into a Pidgeotto because Pidgey are plentiful everywhere you go. Then I transferred it to the professor, expecting to get at least five candies from it. After all, Pidgeotos have to be worth more than a Pidgey. Nope! No matter how high the evolution, you still only get one candy. It doesn't matter if you transfer a 150 CP Pidgey or a 12 CP Pidgey. You still only get one candy, which is a horrible exchange! Professor Willow is running one of those money-for-gold racketing scams with this crap. And speaking of overpriced scams, let's talk about gyms. If you come across a gym and it belongs to another team, you battle to take it over. And you get to use six Pokemon. Although the fight mechanics are terrible. You tap the Pokemon to use a basic attack, and you can swipe the screen to dodge. But sad to say, it barely works, and I can never get the timing right. And one thing that is totally not made clear is how you can use a Pokemon's second attack by holding on it when the meter in the corner is charged. Oh, and speaking of unexplained concepts, all those different Pokemon that you've been catching and just transferring willy-nilly actually have different moves. Some take a while to charge and are really powerful, and some have multiple bars for rapid uses. Point is, is you should pay attention to that, but it's not your fault if you didn't. No one told you to. If you manage to survive the gauntlet, you can actually claim the gym from another team by playing the same matches over and over and over again. It's not a one and done thing. You need to bring down the gym's prestige or level. When that happens, you get rid of one Pokemon you have to keep fighting by destroying the gym's tier. And I hope you have lots of revives and potions because that's the only way you can heal your Pokemon. And you gotta do this again, and again, and again. If you do run out of heals, you got to run to a stop, maybe get one revive, wait five minutes for the stop to refresh, and hope to get a potion out of it. Yeah, well, that's fine, that'll heal one of your Pokémon about halfway. From there, it's just 60 minutes to replenish your whole team. But if you come across a gym that is controlled by your team, then you can train there. Oh, so that's how you make your Pokemon stronger, right? <laughs> nope! Once again, this game is all about making everything stronger except your Pokemon. If you win a battle, the gym gains prestige. If a player levels that gym up, they get to assign one Pokemon to help defend that gym. And I wish someone actually told me that's the way it works, because I walked away just before leveling a team gym up. Because a day later, I can't even beat the first guy now and you get nothing for it. It's basically slamming your fist against a wall and wasting all your heals. There is no way new players can get their foot in the door. And if they do manage to overtake a gym, these high power Pokemon players can just double back and reclaim the gym. It's like actually being able to walk into Giovanni's gym when you first come to it and getting your level seven ass pummeled by two level 50 Pokemon. 
Most other online games have a rank system that pins you against someone who is roughly on your level, whether through skill or practice or just buying stuff. And even if you manage to win one battle, your Pokemon aren't getting any stronger from it. However, if you are lucky enough to get one Pokemon in a gym, in exchange you'll receive earnings such as items and coins. That is until your team is eventually beaten, resetting the whole thing, and your Pokemon are none the stronger for the experience. Or lack thereof. And when I realized this, the whole thing just kind of seemed hollow. I couldn't train the rarer Pokemon I was excited about getting, because either I needed more of them, or just focus on gathering as many commons as possible, because they're the most plentiful resource. It's a constant go, 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 more, 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 push, 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 without any lasting satisfaction or stop. As a compliment, I am surprised how little data this thing uses. However, in the effort to make this video, I've already blown through 25% of my data this billing cycle. Which is fine, I usually only use about 50%, but it shows you that this isn't an everyday thing. At least for some people. Oh, and I haven't just been to the park, which is actually an ideal setting for Pokemon Go. Stops are plentiful, and there are at least three gyms. I'll never forget my first match at the International Sexual Abuse and Domestic Violence Memorial because I got r But I also tried testing out some shopping areas and even a Home Depot because, again, the water lines. There were plenty of Pokemon, Ekans mostly, but no gyms, not even a Pokestop, which was weird because I was thinking, put one or two there for the kids while their parents are shopping. And then I realized, what kids? There's nothing near any schools, for obvious reasons. Conversely, every single church seems to be one. And any major business with complimentary Wi-Fi is probably not going to be a gym or have access to a lot of Pokestops to not have a bunch of extra people bugging the clientele. So it would have to be a huge public spot with Wi-Fi and preferably out of the heat. Ah, the library. Home to countless books and a few bookworms and exactly zero gyms. I can't believe they had two stops inside the building, but no gyms. Not like that would help. The Wi-Fi was so slow with all those people there. The stops wouldn't even reset after the five minute refresh cycle. Then I went to Fashion Square Mall, which is actually kind of nice. A sprawling air conditioned space. I actually didn't have to worry about my battery exploding. But once again, there were no gyms in range. And again, it was the same kind of Pokemon I'd seen everywhere else. Come on, if there were going to be any electric type Pokemon, I'd figure it'd be here. I guess if I wanted to, I could just walk my egg around. Oh yeah, I can't believe I spent all this time without talking about eggs. Some stops will give you Pokemon eggs. And you can hatch those eggs by popping them in incubators and walking around a certain distance. You have one infinite use incubator, but you can always buy a couple extra ones. Sometimes you'll get basic stuff, and other times you'll get rare Pokemon. Oh look, a new Squirtle that's three times stronger than the one I started out with. Which I really didn't need because you catch all your Pokemon off the bat. I think this is what broke me. That's when I realized that this isn't Pokemon. But... I couldn't help but wonder if it could be. Now I understand that the main appeal of this is taking funny shots of Pokemon in odd places, or the thrill of actually nailing the little boogers with a Pokeball, but when it comes to the actual gameplay mechanics, there just doesn't seem to be a good one in play. And if there is one, it's so needlessly cryptic that it stops being fun after a while. And I will fully admit my ignorance if someone comes forward and explains to me how I've been doing everything wrong. But remember, this is my personal experience. And I'm not the only one who feels that they were left out of the loop to begin with. Now that being said, the first thing I would change is the level and evolution system. Instead of one candy for one Pokemon, why not make rock candy? Or fire candy? Aqua candy? Veggie candy? Etc, etc. One candy for one type of Pokemon. I think that's a sensible compromise between this collectathon we currently have and an actual leveling system. 
because I wouldn't mind taking all my mankeys and just blending them into a sports drink so I can feed them to my Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan, two fighting Pokemon I really want to play with, but can't because they keep getting creamed by the 600 plus Raticate. And by the way, this isn't a hypothetical situation. There's an actual in-game example of this in the form of Eevee. In this game, when you evolve an Eevee, it randomly becomes a fire, a water, or an electric type. I think it's random, but it could have something to do with the time of day or the last text you got, for all I know. Point is, you get a powerful type advantage Pokemon fairly early in the game, and these evolved forms still use Eevee candy to power up. There's a reason these freaks are in every gym I've come across. Speaking of battling, dodging was the one mechanic I was really excited about, but ended up being the one that completely vexed me. Also turns out that the undying gym boss bug is caused by spamming Pokemon attacks too many times. The server has to register all the attacks you've made before it declares you winner. And seeing how the servers are already on the top of their game, first of all, fix that. Second, stick some buttons on the side of your Pokemon. You have buttons everywhere else. Why shouldn't this be any different? Three buttons on screen. One for attack, special attack, and dodge. Also, you can have build up and cooldown meters built into the buttons. That way you know when to use an attack, when it's available again, and when you should just focus on dodging until then. A little player feedback should take care of that input spam problem. And speaking of input, I think there should be a clearer visual signal when Pokemon are performing or getting ready to perform an attack. Because now it's just all kinds of crap on the screen and some of it's like really small and some of it only lasts for a couple seconds. I don't know, just look at Platinum. They're good with all that QTE stuff. Also, I suggest a Pokemon Center be added to the Gym Stop and the just announced Trade Centers. But Pokemon Stops are kind of like Pokemon Centers, right? In that they're the only place you can get healing items. Yeah, but you run through those items so quickly, especially with the repetitive nature of the gym battles. It would be nice to have one place where you can heal all your Pokemon. Preferably, I'd like them to heal over time, but here's the second reason for the Centers. I would like you to be able to talk to a Nurse Joy there and have her tell the players interesting tips about the game in the form of conversation. I love getting here early and feeding all the Goldines by the water fountain. Oh, this one time I was on my lunch break and a Kadabra stole my spoon. I was walking home one night and I had this ghastly feeling something was following me. Little drops that can give you clues when certain rare Pokemon will show up at certain points of the day. And finally, I say there needs to be some kind of online mode. And I know the whole point is to get people out there and walking, but come on! We can't keep our phones on all the time, burning through our data and batteries. And I know this is kind of vague, but just something! Like maybe a mode where you can challenge your friends to a match in the comfort of your own home at the end of the day. Maybe you can just get home and open up your phone and see all your Pokemon just chilling around your bedroom. Maybe you can pair two or three Pokemon together and just see how they interact. Or maybe some kind of mini game where you throw a ball back and forth at each other. This is all just spitballing and kind of superficial to the game, but I think you should really take more advantage of this augmented reality thing and try to include something that actually endears you to your Pokemon the same way the original did instead of just the disposable hunks of meat that they are now. Final thoughts? Well, simply put, I think this is the most beautiful, possibly revolutionary, hot pile of rancid garbage I've ever seen. It had a horrible launch. Not because of the server's issue. That's to be expected with almost every popular game. What I'm talking about is the lack of communication about the basic rules of the game. If any other game had this lack of conveyance, to the point where they needed to be thousands of articles and videos explaining the basics of gameplay, that wouldn't be acceptable. But it's Pokemon, so we just give it a pass, I guess. The level and battling system is tedious and inconsequential as the game has already reached a kind of stagnation, with the same kind of more common Pokémon overpowering all the rarer ones. Seriously, once I saw a Golbat, a Pidgeot, and an Arcanine get replaced by a completely different Arcanine, Golbat, and Pidgeot. So that Pikachu you oh so cleverly got at the start of the game? 
Well, unless you live somewhere where you can catch a hundred of them, it's more or less just a trophy. The only bright side I can see is that there is no obvious pay-to-win model, like gumball machines that you can spend money on, and they'll give you neutral candy that you can give to any Pokemon, or something sleazy like that. And the overall layout plans of most areas are just haphazard. I get not putting gyms in stores, I get not wanting to disturb anyone at the library, but you couldn't put one gym in the freaking food court? Pokestops are worse because some areas are okay, but others are randomly placed and sketchy as balls. Not to mention that Pokelures do a better job at luring people than Pokemon. There's already a story of a crew of armed robbers putting down lures and then robbing any poor saps that happen to come along. There seems to be legitimately horrifying real-world consequences to this stuff that people are just now starting to realize, when in fact that should have been obviously no-brainer stuff to begin with. However, you can't ignore the strong points of this game. The augmentation is great, the models look fantastic, and it's a wild success as a social game. For every possibly fake horror story there is, there seems to be one of bonding and friendship. However, the final impression is that the whole thing is so lopsided. You succeeded so well in this new area of augmented reality simulator, but face-planted so hard when it comes to the most basic foundations of RPGs, online balance, and real-world common sense. All things that should have been the easiest part of the job because there are so many successful models, including the namesake. And if you're saying that I'm being too harsh and that the game is obviously never meant to be that kind of Pokemon game, it's more about the collecting and social experience. Well, to that I say, look at the other games. Pokemon Snap is clearly about photography. Pokemon is clearly a fighting game. And I'm taking an educated guess that Detective Pikachu is a puzzle solver. But Pokemon Go was basically advertised as a Pokemon game, with catching and battling, yet only really delivers on half of that formula. Which is more disappointing than anything, and kind of reckless, because I guarantee you there will be imitators, and maybe one of them will be able to nail down the exploration and gameplay. Perhaps a franchise that is literally all about invisible creatures hovering around humans, maybe? Regardless, the actual Pokemon games are still available. Game? What's a game? Oh, <laughs> a game. Hey, CR here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see some more, I have links to two other Pokemon videos that I made. First, there's Familiar Faces Porygon, a retrospective of one of the most infamous pocket monsters in the series. Then a look at the Pokemon Battling Coin game. Another attempt to recreate the magic that didn't go nearly as well as Pokemon Go. Also, if you like, you can subscribe for more stuff, and if you want to, you can join my Patreon and help me make these videos. And there are links to other social media in the description below. Thanks again.